Acadians. The Acadians are the descendants of French colonists who settled in Acadia during the 17th and 18th centuries, some of whom are also descended from the indigenous peoples of the region. The colony was located in what is now eastern Canada's maritime provinces, as well as part of Quebec, and present-day Maine to the Kennebec River. Although today most of the Acadians and Quebecois are French-speaking Canadians, Acadia was a distinctly separate colony of New France. It was geographically and administratively separate from the French colony of Canada. As a result, the Acadians and Quebecois developed two distinct histories and cultures. They also developed a slightly different French language. France has one official language and to accomplish this they have an administration in charge of the language. Since the Acadians were separated from this council, their French language evolved independently, and Acadians retain several elements of 17th century French that have been lost in France. The settlers whose descendants became Acadians came from many areas in France, but especially regions such as Ile de France, Normandy, Brittany, Poitou, and Aquitaine. Acadian family names have come from many areas in France. For example, the Maillets are from Paris, the Le Bleus of Normandy, the surname Melanson is from Brittany, and those with the surnames Bastarig and Basque came from Aquitaine. During the French and Indian War, British colonial officers suspected Acadians were aligned with France after finding some Acadians fighting alongside French troops at Fort Bossure. Though most Acadians remained neutral during the French and Indian War, the British, together with New England legislators and militia, carried out the great expulsion of the Acadians during the 1755-1764 period. They deported approximately 11,500 Acadians from the maritime region. Approximately one-third perished from disease and drowning. The result was what one historian described as an ethnic cleansing of the Acadians from maritime Canada. Other historians indicate that it was a deportation similar to other deportations of the time period. Most Acadians were deported to various American colonies, where many were forced into servitude, or marginal lifestyles. Some Acadians were sent to the Caribbean and some were deported to France. After being expelled to France, many Acadians were eventually recruited by the Spanish government to migrate to present day Louisiana state, where they developed what became known as Cajun culture. In time, some Acadians returned to the maritime provinces of Canada, mainly to New Brunswick because they were barred by the British from resettling their lands and villages in what became Nova Scotia. Before the U.S. Revolutionary War, the Crown settled New England planters in former Acadian communities and farmland as well as loyalists after the war. British policy was to assimilate Acadians with the local populations where they resettled. Acadians speak a dialect of French called Acadian French. Many of those in the Moncton area speak Chiac and English. The Louisiana Cajun descendants speak a dialect of American English called Cajun English, with many also speaking Cajun French, a close relative of the original dialect from Canada influenced by Spanish and West African languages. During the early 1600s, about 60 French families were established in Acadia. They developed friendly relations with the Wabanaki Confederacy, learning their hunting and fishing techniques. The Acadians lived mainly in the coastal regions of the Bay of Fundy, farming land reclaimed from sea through diking. Living in a contested borderland region between French Canada and British territories, the Acadians often became entangled in the conflict between the powers. Over a period of 74 years, Six wars took place in Acadia and Nova Scotia in which the Confederacy and some Acadians fought to keep the British from taking over the region. While France lost political control of Acadia in 1713, the Mi'kmaq did not concede land to the British. Along with some Acadians, the Mi'kmaq from time to time used military force to resist the British. This was particularly evident in the early 1720s during Dummer's War but hostilities were brought to a close by a treaty signed in 1726. The British conquest of Acadia happened in 1710. Over the next 45 years the Acadians refused to sign an unconditional oath of allegiance to Britain. Many were influenced by Father Jean-Louis Leloutre, who from his arrival in 1738 until his capture in 1755 preached against the English Devil's Apostrophe. During this time period Acadians participated in various militia operations against the British and maintained vital supply lines to the French fortress of Louisbourg and Fort Bossure. During the French and Indian War, the British sought to neutralize any military threat Acadians posed and to interrupt the vital supply lines Acadians provided to Louisbourg by deporting Acadians from Acadia. With the founding of Halifax in 1749 the Mi'kmaq resisted British settlements by making numerous raids on Halifax, Dartmouth, Lawrencetown, and Lunenburg. During the French and Indian War, 
The Micmac assisted the Acadians in resisting the British during the expulsion of the Acadians. Many Acadians might have signed an unconditional oath to the British monarchy had the circumstances been better, while other Acadians did not sign because they were clearly anti-British. For the Acadians who might have signed an unconditional oath, there were numerous reasons why they did not doubt the difficulty was partly religious, in that the British monarch was the head of the Church of England. Another significant issue was that an oath might commit male Acadians to fight against France during wartime. A related concern was whether their Mi'kmaq neighbors might perceive this as acknowledging the British claim to Acadia rather than the Mi'kmaq. As a result, signing an unconditional oath might have put Acadian villages in danger of attack from Mi'kmaq. In the Great Expulsion, after the Battle of Fort Beausejour beginning in August 1755 under Lieutenant Governor Lawrence, approximately 11,500 Acadians were expelled, their lands and property confiscated, and in some cases their homes burned. The Acadians were deported throughout the British eastern seaboard's colonies from New England to Georgia. Although measures were taken during the embarkation of the Acadians to the transport ship, some families became split up. After 1758, thousands were transported to France. Most of the Acadians who went to Louisiana were transported there from France on five Spanish ships. Provided be the Spanish crown to populate their Louisiana colony and provide farmers to supply New Orleans. The Spanish had hired agents to seek out the dispossessed Acadians in Brittany and the effort was kept secret so as not to anger the French king. These new arrivals from France joined the earlier wave expelled from Acadia, creating the Cajun population and culture. The Spanish forced the Acadians they had transported to settle along the Mississippi River, to block British expansion, rather than western Louisiana where many of them had family and friends and where it was much easier to farm. Rebels among them marched to New Orleans and ousted the Spanish governor. The Spanish later sent infantry from other colonies to put down the rebellion and execute the leaders. After the rebellion in December 1769, the Spanish governor O'Reilly permitted the Acadians who had settled across the river from Natchez to resettle on the Iberville or Amy River closer to New Orleans. A second and smaller expulsion occurred when the British took control of the north shore of what is now New Brunswick. After the fall of Quebec, the British lost interest and many Acadians returned to British North America, settling in coastal villages not occupied by American colonists. A few of these had evaded the British for several years, but the brutal winter weather eventually forced them to surrender. Some returnees settled in the region of Fort St. Anne, now Fredericton, but were later displaced by the arrival of the United Empire loyalists after the American Revolution. In 2003, at the request of Acadian representatives, Queen Elizabeth II, Queen of Canada issued a royal proclamation acknowledging the deportation and establishing July 28 as an annual day of commemoration, beginning in 2005. The day is called the Great Upheaval on some English language calendars. The Acadians today live predominantly in the Canadian maritime provinces, as well as parts of Quebec, Louisiana, and Maine. In New Brunswick, Acadians inhabit the northern and eastern shores of New Brunswick, from Miscou Island, Ilamec including Caracat in the center, all the way to Naguac in the southern part, Grandance in the eastern part and Campbellton through to Suncanton in the northern part. Other groups of Acadians can be found in the Magdalen Islands and throughout other parts of Quebec. Many Acadians still live in and around the area of Madawaska, Maine where the Acadians first landed and settled in what is now known as the St. John Valley. There are also Acadians in Prince Edward Island and Nova Scotia such as Shotikam, Almadam, and Clare. East and West Pubnico, located at the end of the province, are the oldest regions still Acadian. The Acadians settled on the land before the deportation and returned to some of the same exact land after the deportation. Still others can be found in the southern and western regions of New Brunswick, western Newfoundland and in New England. Many of these latter communities have faced varying degrees of assimilation. For many families in predominantly Anglophone communities, French language attrition has occurred, particularly in younger generations. The Acadians who settled in Louisiana after 1764, known as Cajuns, have had a dominant cultural influence in many parishes, particularly in the southwestern area of the state known as Acadiana. Today, Acadians are a vibrant minority, particularly in New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, Louisiana, and northern Maine. Since 1994, Le Congress Mondial Acadian has united Acadians of the Maritimes, New England, and Louisiana. August 15, the Feast of the Assumption, was adopted as the National Feast Day of the Acadians at the First Acadian National Convention, held in Memramcook, New Brunswick in 1881. On that day, 
The Acadians celebrate by having the Tintamar which consists mainly of a big parade where eight people can dress up with the colors of Acadia and make a lot of noise. The national anthem of the Acadians is Ave, Marie Stella, adopted at Miss Cush, Prince Edward Island in 1884. The anthem was revised at the 1992 meeting off the Société Nationale de la Cadie, where the second, third and fourth verses were changed to French, with the first and last kept in the original Latin. The Fédération des Associations de Famille Acadienne of New Brunswick and the Société Santo Madacan of Prince Edward Island has resolved that December 13 each year shall be commemorated as Acadian Remembrance Day to commemorate the sinking of the Duke William and the nearly 2,000 Acadians deported from Mila St. Jean who perished in the North Atlantic from hunger, disease and drowning in 1758. The event has been commemorated annually since 2004 and participants mark the event by wearing a black star. Today. There are cartoons featuring Acadian characters and an Acadian show named Academia. In 1847, American writer Henry Wadsworth Longfellow published Evangeline, an epic poem loosely based on the events surrounding the 1755 deportation. The poem became an American classic and contributed to a rebirth of Acadian identity in both Maritime Canada and in Louisiana. In the early 20th century, two statues were made of Evangeline, one in St. Martinville. Louisiana and the other in Grand Pre, Nova Scotia, which both commemorate the expulsion. Robbie Robertson wrote a popular song based on the Acadian expulsion titled Acadian Driftwood, which appeared on the band's 1975 album, Northern Lights, Southern Cross. Antonine Maillet's Pelagie La Charette concerns the return voyage to Acadia of several deported families starting 15 years after the Great Expulsion. The Acadian Memorial honors those 3,000 who settled in Louisiana. Throughout the Canadian Maritime Provinces there are Acadian monuments to the expulsion, such as the one at George's Island and Beaubert's Island. The flag of the Acadians is the French tricolor with a golden star in the blue field, which symbolizes the Saint Mary, Our Lady of the Assumption, patron saint of the Acadians and the Star of the Sea. This flag was adopted in 1884 at the Second Acadian National Convention, held in Miss Cush, Prince Edward Island. Acadians in the diaspora have adopted other symbols. The flag of Acadians in Louisiana, known as Cajuns, was designed by Thomas J. Arsenault of the University of Louisiana at Lafayette, and adopted by the Louisiana legislature as the official emblem of the Acadiana region in 1974. A group of New England Acadians attending Le Congress Mondial Acadian in Nova Scotia in 2004, endorsed a design for a New England Acadian flag by William Cork, and are advocating for its wider acceptance. Notable Acadians in the 18th century include Noel Warren. Noel was one of more than 350 Acadians that perished on the Duke William on December 13, 1758. Noel was described by the captain of the Duke William as the father of the whole island, a reference to Noel's place of prominence among the Acadian residents of Isle St. Jean. For his noble resignation and self-sacrifice aboard the Duke William, Noel was celebrated in popular print throughout the 19th century in Britain and America. Noel also was the namesake of the village Noel, Nova Scotia. Another prominent Acadian from the 18th century was militia leader Joseph Broussard who joined French priest Jean-Louis Le Loutre in resisting the British occupation of Acadia. More recent notable Acadians include singers Angèle Arsenault and Edith Butler, singer Jean-Francois Bro, writer Antonin Maillet, film director Phil Camo singer-songwriter Julie Warren, artist Phoebe Leisure, boxers Yvonne Durrell and Jacques LeBlanc, pitcher Réal Cormier, former Governor-General Romeo LeBlanc, former Premier of Prince Edward Island Aubin Edmund Arsenault, the first Acadian Premier of any province and the first Acadian appointed to a provincial Supreme Court, Georges Hébert, guitarist, most notably having played with Anne Murray for over 30 years, as well as for the New Brunswick Playboy's 1960s rock band, Aubin Edmund Arsenault's father, Joseph Octave Arsenault, the first Acadian appointed to the Canadian Senate from Prince Edward Island, Peter John Vignette, first Acadian Premier of New Brunswick, and former New Brunswick Premier Louis Robichaud, who was responsible for modernizing education and the government of New Brunswick in the mid-20th century. Singers Beyoncé and Solange Knowles have Acadian ancestry. Yvette Dantremont aka Sidebabe is also Acadian. Prominent Louisiana Acadians include Senator Dudley J. LeBlanc, singer-songwriter Zachary Richard, and historian and president of the Council for the Development of French in Louisiana William Arsenault. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.